Greetings to all. I am Namrata Soni, Assistant Professor Cum Statistician at Community Medicine Department, Santosh Deem Tobi University, Ghaziabad. Today we will talk about a topic in biostatistics uh, that is correlation and regression. So uh, continuing to this topic, we will first talk about the measuring the strength of quantitative relationship. So as all of you know, it is known that the relationship of smoking is strong with cancer, mild with BP and practically nil with intraocular pressure. So these kind of relationships uh, can be measured with some biostatistical tools. If they, uh, these relationships are quantitative, we can talk about correlation and regression. However, in qualitative type of variables, uh, there are some other measures which we will talk about later. So statistically speaking, a relationship is strong if the scatter plot follows an exact pattern and weak if the points are widely scattered. So uh, if you have studied the graphical presentation of data, you all have, are uh, totally aware about the scatter plot in which uh, there are two variables and uh, these two variables are uh, um, plotted on the two axes in the graph and accordingly the points are plotted on the uh, graph. So if these uh, scatter plots show a pattern, then there could be a relationship between the variables uh, showing on the axis. However, if there is not any pattern, you can uh, easily uh, conclude from that graph only that there is no relationship between those two variables discussed. So different types of measure of the strength of a relationship are computed depending on the nature of the variables involved. As I have discussed earlier that in quantitative type of uh, variables, we will use the correlation and regression. However, some other measures are also available for uh, measuring the strength of relationship between qualitative variables. So in measuring this strength, an attempt is made to answer two type of question. What are these two questions? How consistently change in one is accompanied by change in the other? and whether the change follows a set pattern or is wavering. So first, uh, our interest is in uh, identifying that if there is any change exists between the two variables discussed and after identifying that there is, a, there is consistently change occurring in one variable in response to the other, then we uh, want to find out a set pattern between those two variables. What is that pattern? like if one is increasing is the other is also increasing or decreasing so if one is increasing and the other variable is also increase in response then we say that there is a direct or positive relationship between those two variables however if you find that on increasing one variable there is a decreasing pattern in the other variable uh, in the question then you could say that there is a negative kind of relationship or there is an indirect relationship between the variables discussed. So uh, in, this uh, in this type of phenomena, you are observing there, that there are two variables of which there is a decision that uh, which variable you would uh, consider as dependent and which variable you will consider as independent. Okay, so uh, the dependent variable shows the pattern in response to the independent variable. So note that the strength of relationship is a quantitative expression that measures how much and not just presence or absence. So the, these kind of relationship which, measure, which are measured by the correlation and regression, in these methods we try to find out the quantitative measure of how much, how much strong is the relationship and uh, we are not just identifying the presence or absence of relationship, okay? So it also gives us the measures of strength of relationship between two variables. So coming to correlation, correlation measures the degree of relationship between the variables and consideration. So what is this degree? If the, uh, the positive value is very close to one, the correlation is said to be positive and if the uh, correlation coefficient which we will talk about later is very near to the to the value of minus one 
then we will say that there is a negative a strong relationship between those two variables so from this statement you can identify that correlation coefficient lies between the two values that are minus 1 and 1 also a thing to note is that both variables are quantitative in classical setup okay so as i have discussed that this method gives efficient result in only uh, those situation where the variables discussed are quantitative in nature okay correlation helps us in finding the relationship between two quantitative variables without being able to infer causal relationship yeah so this point is very important that it gives me the degree of relationship but it can't identify the independent and dependent variable so it is on the discretion of the user which is using this statistical tool which who will identify that in between the two variables which variable is independent and which is dependent okay so you have you are the decision maker about the uh, role of variable so the first measure which we will talk about in the correlation is product moment or pearson correlation which is frequently used in case of quantitative measures okay where the variables are quantitative okay so uh, the formula is uh, given as below summation x minus x bar y minus y bar upon summation y minus y bar whole square uh, x minus x bar whole square this formula is further simplified in the example given in next slide okay so as you can identify that you would have uh, to calculate mean and variance of the two variables discussed so the value of r when you uh, calculate this value the value of r can be negative or positive okay and a, an interesting property of this uh, correlation coefficient is that the value of r does not change if you add subtract multiply or divide each value of x or each value of y or both by any, by any positive con constant okay this property is also called invariance under change of origin and scale so what does this statement say so if you are having some bigger values some uh, some values that are um, bigger in magnitude so what can you do in those cases you can divide those values by a common uh, divisor okay so that you can de decrease the, uh, their magnitude okay but if you Uh, do this process on both the variables and then calculate the correlation coefficient then also you will find that the correlation coefficient value does not change okay in both cases if you use the original values or you use the uh, decrease or modified values okay you will find that there is no change between the correlation coefficient uh, calculated in the original kind of data or modified data okay so the quantity r square if we square the quantity of correlation coefficient if we square the correlation coefficient the measures uh, this measures the contribution of x to the variation in y when y is considered dependent so the quantity r square plays a very vital role in defining the variation of y what is y y is dependent variable which will vary according to the variation in the independent variable okay next point the correlation coefficient is symmetric and any of the two variable can be called x and the other y so correlation coefficient between y and x or between x and y will come out to be same will come out to be equal okay but to define to explain the conclusion of this uh, correlation coefficient you would have to identify one variable as dependent and one variable as independent and again i am uh, outlining that this decision is totally up to you that uh, according to your knowledge which variable are you considering as independent and which variable as dependent okay so if we talk about the graphical representation of the data in through the scatter graph you can identify you can uh, see this illustration as an example also okay in this example we are considering age on x axis and forced vital capacity on y axis 
so the data is uh, divided into three groups where the total data contains the age group 0 uh, or 10 to 80 while the three div uh, division of data are showing the age groups 10 to 25 25 and 40 and 40 to 80 okay so if you can observe you can see that between 10 to 25 age group there is a increasing pattern uh, shown in the graph what what does this increasing pattern tells you tell you okay so this increasing pattern tell you that in the, this age group the there is a positive correlation between age and forced vital capacity or you can uh, explain it like this that if we increase if we go to uh, age 25 from 10 the forced vital capacity increases with the age okay however in the next part that is in b part you can observe that there is a stable pattern there that in this kind of uh, graph the uh, x axis and y axis do not show any variation they are being constant okay so in response to x there is a equal value of uh, uh, or there is a equal variation in y okay no increasing no decreasing there is an equal variation okay after 40 uh, age in 40 to 80 age group there is a decreasing pattern where you can see that where you can explain this graph as that after uh, the age of 40 the forced vital capacity decreases while there is whereas there is an increase in age so with increasing age the forced vital capacity decreases in the age group 40 to 80 combining this graph in a in one single graph okay combining these a b c parts into one graph we can observe the d part as that there is a increasing pattern in the beginning while after having a constant phenomena between the two variable again there is a decreasing pattern between the two variables okay so this graph shows the overall pattern of correlation between the variables discussed so taking an example a sample of 6 children was selected data about their age in years and weight in kilograms was recorded as shown in the following table it is required to find the correlation between age and weight okay so this is the data the formula which i have shown you earlier in the last slides is simplified as below okay where summation x y this expression denotes the product of variable x and y values and then summing this product over all the observations okay summation x is the separate sum of variable x and summation y is the separate sum of variable y after summing the values of x and summation uh, and summing the values of y you will multiply those sums and then you will divide the, the that particular product by n please Uh, don't be confused in those these two expressions summation x y is the product values of x and y each value of x will be multiplied by each value of y and then those products will be summed up however in the second expression the value of x will be summed up separately the values of y will be summed up separately and those sums will be multiplied multiplied and then that product will be divided by the total number of observations similarly in the denominator you can observe that summation x square is the squared uh, values of variable x okay for this expression you will calculate a squared value of uh, variable x and then you will sum up those squares however in uh, the expression which is uh, being subtracted from the summation x square here the summation x you have calculated earlier that is total of x total of variable x will be squared okay and this will be divided by n you can uh, repeat this process for y as well okay these calculation are shown in next slide also okay the first column is serial number second column is age which is considered as x third column is weight which is considered as y so you can see that here we are considering y that is weight as dependent variable while age as independent variable 
okay because according to the knowledge weight is dependent on the age in natural phenomena okay so what columns you have to calculate for calculating correlation coefficient you will multiply these uh, each values of x and y so 7 into 12 is 84 6 into 8 is 48 8 into 12 is 96 and so on in x square column in x square column what will you do you will square the values of variable x that is 7 square is equal to 49 6 square is equal to 36 and so on that is 9 square is equal to 81 similarly this process will be repeated with variable y 12 square is equal to 44 8 square is equal to 64 and so on okay now you will sum uh, you will uh, take sum of all these columns which is indicated in the last row where summation x is equals to 41, summation y is equals to 66, summation xy is equals to 461 and so on. Now substituting these values in the formula which is given in last slide, okay, you will find that the value of uh, correlation coefficient r is come out to be equal to 0 0.759, okay. So uh, as I said earlier, if the value is more close to 1 that is plus 1 then there is a strong direct correla correlation or a strong positive correlation okay similarly in this example relationship between anxiety and test scores the uh, columns are same okay we have uh, again repeated all the calculation which we uh, described in the last example okay and so after substituting the values calculated in the last table in the formula okay we find that the value of correlation coefficient comes out to be minus 0.94 which indicates that there is a negative strong correlation between the variables discussed that is anxiety and test scores point to note that the test scores are considered as dependent variable however anxiety scores are considered as independent variable coming to the next slide you will have to calculate correlation coefficient for the given data okay please uh, do this exercise and discuss the doubts okay so there are some remarks the correlation coefficient is a pure number without any unit and ranges from minus 1 to 1 a value close to 0 indicates that the two variables are linearly uncorrelated that is a change in the value of one is not accompanied by any linear change in the other the scatter can be can then be a horizontal line with no slope which we observed in the part b of graphical format so if you are finding a horizontal line then there is no relationship in two variables in those in that particular area a value close to plus one indicates a strong positive relationship body temperature and heart rate have a strong positive correlation and a value of close to minus one indicates a strong negative correlation like birth weight and Weight during infancy under normal conditions have a strong negative correlation. A perfect plus minus 1 would mean that the scatter of y with x forms a straight line. Okay. If you are having a uh, correlation coefficient as plus 1 or minus 1, then in those cases you will find a straight line in increasing pattern or in decreasing pattern if the value is plus one you will find a straight line in increasing pattern however if you are having a value of minus one of correlation coefficient you will observe that in the graph you are find you will find a straight line in a decreasing pattern in perfect decreasing pattern okay this would seldom occur in health or medicine however generally speaking a correlation greater than 0 0.8 is in absolute value can be considered strong between 0.8 and 0.5 the correlation will be considered as moderate in point uh, between 0.5 and 0.3 it will be considered as weak and between 0.3 and 0 almost non-existent this pattern will similarly follow in the negative correlation also okay product moment correlation are measures only the linear component of the relationship and this line must have some slope small or big negative or positive okay so the method we discussed in the last slides is linear correlation method okay where the uh, pattern in one variable that is dependent variable is uh, 
linearly correlated, correlated with independent variable there only we can use this formula for correlation coefficient the right criterion for measurement of a non linear relationship is the coefficient of determination r square so if you are uh, having a data which is non linear in its in its nature then you will have to find the coefficient of determination which is uh, which will be discussed in next classes okay a correlation arising because of intervention of a third irrelevant variable is called a spurious or nonsense correlation also not all explainable correlation can be considered to indicate a cause effect type of relationship as uh, it is clear from the formula that between any of the two any two variables you can take and you can calculate the correlation coefficient however it is very well known to you that any two variables cannot be correlated in practical world okay so it is up to your intellect that how are you using this correlation coefficient now coming to statistical significance of r if you are having a correlation coefficient how will you tell the audience or how will you tell uh, your colleagues that the correlation coefficient you have calculated is statistically significant or not okay that correlation describes the relationship between the two variables significantly or not okay so a correlation coefficient is called sign statistically significant when the probability of it being zero in the population is less than 0.05 or any other such predetermined level of significance so to test the significance we will use the following formula where r is the correlation coefficient value and is number of observations okay the test is valid provided at least one of the variables follows a gaussian pattern so to uh, apply the correlation coefficient formula or to test the significance of the correlation coefficient it is a mandatory condition that between the two variable one variable should follow a gaussian or normal distribution okay okay if this condition is not met it is advisable to use rank correlation okay i'll uh, explain this rank correlation concept in next slides when n is sufficiently large even r is equal to 0.1 can be statistically significant similarly a high correlation say r is equal to 0.6 can be statistically non significant if n is small so what you can observe that the significance of correlation is particularly dependent on the number of observation if you are having a large sample even a small a smaller value of r can be statistic can be proved statistically significant however if you are having very small number of observation even a large value of correlation coefficient can uh, comes out to be stat statistically non significant okay statistical significance merely shows that there is some sort of linear relationship with a non zero slope it does not say how much a distinction must also be made between the gradient of slope in regression and the correlation coefficient r the value of r could be 1 if in if the slope is exceedingly small this will happen if y is consistently increasing by the same small amount for each unit increase in x coming to the concept of rank correlation and the term which i took in the last uh, slides in some cases when x and y clearly increase or decrease together but the relationship is not necessarily linear then this is called a monotonic relationship the dependence of height on the age of children is an example of such a relationship the linearizing effect of the product moment correlation coefficient in such cases amounts to oversimplification of the relationship so when you are having two variables of such a kind where the relationship between uh, those two variable cannot be explained by the linear uh, linear phenomena okay they are not uh, related in a linear manner then what will you do if your data is non linear then you should use the rank correlation an alternative uh, which is an alternative to the product moment correlation so this correlation coefficient is also known as spearman rho uh, rho for this the values of x and y are separately ranked from 1 to n in increasing order of magnitude rank correlation is the ordinary product moment correlation coefficient between ranks of x and ranks of y 
the formula is given is uh, given as below where d is rank of y that is rank of dependent variable minus rank of independent variable and the summation is over all n pair of observations equal ranks are assigned so if you are having two observation two equal observation in your data what will you do you will assign those tied observation equal ranks how will you calculate these equal ranks we will discuss in the example the rank correlation can sometimes overread the strength of the relationship because it partially disregard the actual magnitude of x and y Simple, simply is it is it can be understood simply that because you are not considering the magnitude of x and y this is so the strength of the this method is uh, decreases in those cases the value of rank correlation is not affected so much by one outlier compared to product moment correlation so if you identify one outlier in product moment correlation it will affect the that correlation coefficient badly however the rank correlation coefficient is not affected so much by the outliers so taking this example where we want to find the relationship between level of education and income and the data is given as below how will you calculate the rank correlation so in this example we have considered education level variable as independent and the income level variable as dependent okay so in education level uh, level variable we have given first rank to university okay but because this university level occur twice in the table we will uh, we will divide the two ranks that is 1 and 2 to these two variable how will you divide these two ranks you will average out these two ranks that is 1 plus 2 divided by 2 that is 3 by 2 will be equal to 1.5 and this 1.5 rank will be given to the two values that is c and g okay again after the university level the next rank will be given to the secondary level okay the secondary level also occurs twice in the table and the rank 3 and 4 will again be averaged out to these two values then 3 and 4 will be averaged out to the rank 3.5 and this 3.5 rank will be given equally to the two observation d and e and again uh, after 3 and 4 the next rank is 5 which is given to preparatory educational level then 6 is given to primary and 7 is given to illiterate this same process will be repeated for variable y after calculating the ranks for x and y in y again in y you will give the maximum income level the first rank and so on you will give the ranks to other uh, observation also after calculating the uh, ranks for two variable you will calculate differences between the ranks where you will Uh, take difference of ranks of y from the ranks of x so that 5 minus 3 is equal to 2 6 minus 5.5 gives you 0.5 and so on after calculating these differences you will square these values which is given in next column and after calculating the squares of the differences you will sum up these squared values which comes out to be 64 putting all the values in the formula which was given in the uh, first slide of rank correlation we uh, calculate the co correlation coefficient as minus 0.1 which indicates an indirect weak correlation between level of education and income so you can calculate rank correlation for this data also the statistical significance of r for statistical significance of r uh, in case of 10 uh, sample sizes of 10 or fewer pairs the minimum value of rs for different significance level are given in table 11.3 so after uh, calculating the significance from the formula given in that slide you will compare your value with the tabulated value for n is greater than 11 the gaussian pattern holds reasonably well and the student's t test can be used so if you are having sample size greater than 10 that is 11 or so 11 to 30 then you will you can uh, take the tabulated from value from a student's t table so again coming to regression what do we statistically mean by a relationship consider the example of cholesterol level affected by obesity and hypertension 
Cholesterol level is a continuous variable in this case. The degree of obesity can be measured on the continuous scale by body mass index, but it can also be divided into four groups in that example, namely thin, normal, overweight, and obese. Thus, the quantification of BMI is lost, although the gradient remains. Okay, so in using re uh, regression, the mandatory condition is that one variable has to be on a continuous scale. That cholesterol level is affected by obesity is a perfect conclusion in this case. Okay, is affected or not affected? These two conclusions can uh, occur in your data. But such differences in means in various groups of subject do not generally come under the term statistical relationship. Relation in a statistical sense is the nature or form of the relationship. So degree of relationship is has been discussed in the concept of correlation. Now, nature or form of relationship can be estimated by a regression. Thus, this is an ex expression of quantitative change in one variable per unit change in the other. So, after having a degree between the a degree of relationship between the two variable, you want to predict that if I increase one unit in one variable, what will be it, its effect on the other variable? In the cholesterol level obesity example, a relationship, relationship would be able to indicate how much increase in cholesterol level is expected when BMI increases from say 25 to 26. Such a form of relationship is called a regression. In general, a regression is expressed as this equation where the independent variable is a function of the values of sorry, where the, where the dependent variable is a function of values of independent variable where y cap is the predicted estimated value of the outcome or response of interest called the dependent f is some function that specifies the actual form and x1 x2 x up to xk are variable that may predict or explain the variable y called independent so if you are having k is greater than or equal to 2 variables on the right side of equation 4 that is you are having number of observations greater than 2 on the right side of the equation, then equation 4 becomes a multivariable step. So if you are interested in studying how a systolic level of blood pressure is affected by age in healthy people, then there is only one independent variable that is age. And if so, this relationship can be estimated by the simple regression model. But if you are also interested in identifying the effects of BMI and socioeconomic status together with age on systolic BP, then this relationship becomes multiple regression since the number of independent is more than one. Again, there is a, uh, another case where number of dependent variable increase in the last uh, example where you were increasing the independent variable, the case was multiple regression. However, if you increase the number of dependents from more than um, one, then it is in the domain of multivariate regression. Okay, so the relationship that is relatively simple to comprehend and is most commonly studied is the linear form, which we have earlier discussed in correlation also. The linear correlation and linear regression form are very frequently observed in the literature. Okay, so for K regressors, the regression equation is given as below. This equation defines multiple linear regression with K regressors. Regressors are independent variable. The constants P1, B2 and BK are called regression coefficient and B0 is called as intercept. So a simple form of this equation for one dependent and one independent variable is given below where B0 is intercept, B1 is regression coefficient for independent variable x1 and epsilon the this symbol epsilon is the remainder not accounted by the regression that is also known as error so what is b1 b1 is the rate of change the regression coefficient gives you the rate of ch change in the value of y per unit change in the value of x which is also called slope okay and what is intercept the intercept is the value of y when independent variables becomes zero that it is not having any magnitude then the value of uh, uh, y will be called as intercept so some remarks about the linear regression so linear regression implies that the relationship under investigation is such that y on average always changes by the same quantity b1 as x increases from x to x plus 1 
and is almost valid for the range of values of x and y under study for a given set of data estimates of b0 and b1 can be calculated by the following equations okay so these are the exercises for uh, the next discussion okay you can practice these exercises by yourself and we will discuss the, the issues of all the students in the next class okay so thank you for listening